Hello guys and welcome back to The Sim here in the UK. Now today we're going to try and build prototype number two of the Mobiflight interface board. This board is specifically designed to work with an Arduino Mega Pro in this little packet here. They're tiny which is fantastic. They just plug in to the interface board so you can use it for other projects. And then we've got these big green connectors that are super strong, they're quick release and they just plug into anywhere in the board. Now the reason I've gone for this board, it's designed how I want to design it, unlike other manufacturers. It's got 64 extra inputs and 32 extra outputs, which should be more than enough to do everything on the MIP with just one board and one Arduino. All the connections are really strong. They are quick release and it, this is gonna be mounted, hopefully, in the top of the glare shield here. Now if this board works well today and there are no issues, because you never know, this is why we're doing the prototyping on it, I can release it to the shop for you guys to get as well. So before we populate this board, I just want to take a moment to tell you that I'm going to two Flight Sim Expos if you want to come along and have a chat or see the 737SS. I am only taking this to Leistad Netherlands Expo in March. However, I'm also going to the big Flight Sim Expo in the US, in Las Vegas, in June. So if you fancy meeting up, having a chat, I'll be there. Now back to the board. First thing I'm gonna do is mount some female socket headers for the Arduino. And I'm just gonna put it on and then cut them like that. Gonna need another set there. Perfect. I'm just going to bring the vise in here because I want these to look tidy, neat and smart. And then we're just going to use the file to flatten off the end and make it look a bit smarter. There's our female sockets and now the ends both should look quite tidy. Yes, they look good. Now the question is, will the other sides be long enough to fit on this side. Okay, they are. So I tidy up the ends on these as well. And that just leaves two tiny little three pin sections. So we need a three section. So I'm gonna cut on the fourth pin there. There we go. Just gonna trim the excess off so we don't have to file that part off. There we go. I'll put these together again, put them in the vise, give them a quick file. Now I've just remembered the easier way to do this is to put this board to one side, open the Arduino. That just had to break a point that wasn't going to open it and again, it's open. So here's the little tiny Arduino Mega Pro. Unfortunately this one has got a micro USB instead of USB-C which is a bit of a shame. However, I'm quickly going to insert these header pins into the holes and we're just going to solder them all in location. So there's the board both sides. I think that looks pretty good. So basically now we can use this to make sure that these sockets are in the exact position they need to be to receive this. So we're just gonna feed them in. So that should hold everything nice and parallel and in the right position. We can simply flip it over and solder in position again. That's the Arduino mounted. Now we've got some male header pins at the base here. Uh, the ones, let's do the red first. The red is male header pins that are gonna go there. And that allows us to select between the, taking the five volts from the Arduino to power everything, or the five volts from this two pin connector here, using a jumper, this, this little box here. So first of all, let's get this in, and I'll explain what the other two 
jumper pins are for in a second. I'm only going to do one so I can make sure that they are straight and luckily enough, just by sheer fluke, that's absolutely spot on. And then we've got two more sets of header pins. Now these are used to set the brightness of the LEDs for the output shift registers. There are two output shift registers on the back here and we have the ability to set all the LEDs to full current so we can put the pins on the ground to, to full or we can use two pins from the Arduino and we can select them to PWM and then we can adjust the PWM of those LEDs. So let's put those header pins in and I'm just going to use yellow to indicate those ones even though the board is labelled up anyway. So they can go in, we flip it over and we solder away. So now that just leaves all the large terminal connectors to fit and we'll do that now. That's just one pin of every connector soldered. A quick check to make sure they all do look straight so we can adjust them if they're not sat flat. They all are. So now, let's turn it over and solder all those pins up. Next on, I'm gonna put the headers on. We'll go two yellow and one red. So for the time being, we will use external power. So I'm gonna put it on these two pins here, the center and the left hand one. There we go. And I'm just gonna set the shift output register current to maximum, which again is the left hand side. So there we go. And there we have it. One Mobifly interface board, all completed, ready for testing. We should be able to power the whole 737 MIP assembly from this. Hopefully we'll find that out in a later video. We've just got one micro USB at the front. Now the newer ones, the newer uh, uh, Arduino Mega Pros, they do come with USB-C. I have got some lying around somewhere, but this was the first one I grabbed, so I might as well use it. So before we can test the board, I realized we need something to test the board with. So we've got the Navcom panel here. In fact, we've got the nav panel and then the com panel here. Quickly going to put them, as you can see, they're in the single case, but I'm going to put them into this dual desktop case now. Just give me two seconds while I put some heat inserts into the plastic. We'll mount the panels into the base, and then hopefully we can mount these to the new mobile flight board. Let's give it a go. So that's the inserts placed into the base. Now hopefully you can see at the front there, we've got the com this side and the nav this side. This is specifically meant for the expo for the demo. It's uh, just a dual, dual desktop unit people can lift up and have a look around. Both the panels are hopefully going to slide in there in a second. Now there is a second version online in the build guide where the holes come out the base here so they can be mounted into the pedestal nice and easily. This is the com, this goes at the front. So we're gonna feed the cables through the center section. These are supposed to be slotted screws and I will replace these when they come in. That'll make them look a little bit more authentic. Okay, so this is the com panel. Yeah, there's connector one and they just slide in like that. And there we have our desktop combined com and nav panel for one side with our sexy cat six connectors at the base. Then we've got our cables and they're just gonna plug into com. I've only got one set made up. There we go. 
hopefully you can see that makes for a really neat and simple connection point I'll put this to one side bring in the interface board so let me see if I can explain what's going on and how I've connected the Mobi flight board here on the first block in fact this whole side here are the digi pins that automatically come away from the Arduino so basically they're just fed into these connector blocks here so we've got digi pin 4 all the way up to 46 in this row the first three pins are 4, 5 and 6 and they're used for the 7 segment LED displays at the moment we've only got one set of cables wired up so we can only power either the COM or the NAV doesn't matter because they're interchangeable then pins 7, 8, 9 and 10 they're used for the inner, the dual encoder, the inner and outer. Over here, we've got this row, this whole row along here is the multiplexers. And this happens to be multiplexer. We're going to use pins two and three of multiplexer zero. And that's the transfer and the test button. Over here, we've got a cable to five volts out. Obviously, now we need five volts to power the seven segment displays. So rather than power up the external power supply and plug in two cables here, because we're only powering up two sets of LED displays, I've changed the jumper to Arduino power. So it's feeding the power from the Arduino into the VCC five volt rail. So that's got us buttons, that's got us encoders, that's got us seven segments covered. Now, we want to test the output shift registered. So we've got four blocks of eight 32 pins that we can assign to LEDs. This just happens to be the prototyping uh, PCB for the six pack display, which is currently fitted in the 737. There we go. That's it there. And the PCB sits in the back there. I've taken it out because one, I don't like the way the text is in this Pacific prototype. I'm actually gonna change this. So rather than painting it on the back and having the clear side, the flat side, the untouched at the front, I'm gonna go back to spraying the front and then laser engraving on the front because then you can't see the writing at all until it's lit up. Whereas this way, you can definitely see the text when it's switched off. Not what I really wanted. Well, that was a long waffle just to explain where that PCB came from. Well, that goes back in there. Now with shift registers, these are wired in what I would call like a backwards way to how I would normally wire them. So we've got the five volts off the five volt rail. It actually is going through a 150 ohm resistor because these are orange LEDs connected in parallel. So the five volts is getting fed. It's basically common to every single LED on there. And then, We've got the six cables for the six indications going to the shift output register, which switches off the ground, not the five volts, it switches off the ground side. So you've always got to supply any LEDs connected to the shift register with five volts. Now, I really hope that made sense. Now, in the first version, that caught me out. However, it makes a lot of sense because now you can individually power those LEDs with different voltages, different currents, and all you're doing is switching the ground on and off. Good, we can get that tested in a second. So we've got the LEDs that we can test. I thought that's pretty much all your devices you're gonna test anyway. Everything else will just be connected as you would normally. Uh, servos, all into the digi pins. Multiplexers really are only for buttons right now in Mobi Flight. As soon as the 3D printed base is finished, we'll get this off the ground, we'll get it mounted onto the base, and then we'll start the programming for real. So with the USB cable in, head over to MobiFlight, into MobiFlight modules. There we go. Got to add a device. Now we've got to tell the MobiFlight board that we've got four multiplexers and two shift registers. So multiplexer first. There we go. There's number one. But the pins we're going to use are 32, 33, 34 and 35 good so that's the same for any multiplexer that we use the data pin however is going to be 37 I believe 
36, sorry. 36, there we go. Now we need to add another multiplexer. Because there are actually four on there. There we go. You can see it's put the data pins already. And it should be 37 now. Add another multiplexer. There should be 38. This is always going to be the same. So if you if you get one of these boards, this will be the same figures that you must use for your boards as well. Another multiplexer. So that's it. We've got four. This is the final one. And this will be pin 39. That's the multiplexers done. Now let's do the shift registers. There's two of them. So add device, shift register. There we go. And it's going to be pins 43, 42, and 41. There's 41. There's four sets of 8 bit to make 32. Shift register, we can keep the same, that's fine. Next device. Now, this is specific to me. In fact, let me upload this. Done. Right, so what we've got there is the, the multiplexers and the shift registers. They are the base ones. You need to have those in for the item to work. Now, everything I'm going to add now is just simply to get the, the COM panel and the VHF panels to work. So here we go. Add device. We've got, first of all, we've got seven segment displays. So that's up the top there. And my pins are 465. Let me just change this off because it's we're yeah. Got to change these away from the ones we want to use. Go pins four, six, five. There should be two of them on that thing. Okay, add another device, seven segment display. Seven segment display, there it is. And this time it's twelve thirteen. Twelve. 14 and 13 and two there I'm going to upload that hit OK good the displays have finally stopped flashing that's always a good start hit OK I think we better test those displays to make sure they work yep test that works is there a there is a, a decimal point stop OK That all looks good. LED module one, yeah. Test. Ooh. That's good. Display module one, section two, which is good. Test. That's good. Right, so if I hit run, Straight away, all the seven segments are working. That's absolutely brilliant. So usually that's the hardest part. Getting the seven segments to work is always a huge relief. So let's go back into MobiFlight modules. And now I need to add, we've got some encoders that we need to add. Okay, so we get this unit fully working. Let's find the encoders. There's one encoder. And the first encoders are on pins seven and eight cool add device encoder nine and ten add device encoder this time it's going to be 15 and 16 add device encoder just remember these are specific to my i've just hit the microphone just remember that these are specific to my setup, so these will be different on your pin numbers. And finally, 17 and 18 for the last encoder. Okay, it's gonna upload the config on those. And I think that's all we need to do. So if we go over to input now, and let's look at the encoder. So this is the COM1 outer. I'm going to just simply press scan. I'm going to change the COM1 outer. 
There we go, has it picked it up? It has. That's all done. Now the nav one outer. Scan for input, nav one. Hit OK. Com one inner, scan for input. Did it find it? Encoder, yes it did. Hit OK. Uh, scan for input, and this is going to be nav one inner. It's found it, OK. Then we've got the COM1 transfer. So if we push it, oh, it seems to have found it already, OK. So scan for input, this is COM. If I push the transfer button, yeah, it's entered it in. And the same for the nav1 transfer, scan for input. There we go. So next up, we've got to test the LEDs. And for that, we need the shift register. So we open the line up. You can see that we have just selected shift register in the output. And the very first one of the 32 that we can actually select is output zero. And if I push test here, have a look. Yeah, that's showing without an issue. Next line, this should be, you can see that it's shift register one. It is one, all I'm gonna do is hit test. That works, stop, hit OK. So now that I've shown you how to do the first two, and as you can see, they're just consecutively numbered down the list. All I'm gonna do is hit test at the top, and that should light them all up. And it does. Well, that's it, guys. I've shown you how to assemble the board, how to program it. I will actually put the MCC config file, the Mobile Flight config file, in the build guide of this unit, so you can just download it straight away. And that should make it work, actually, instantaneously. You've also had a quick sneak peek at the COM and NAV. The NAV you've already seen. The COM is new. I'm still yet to do the build video for that. But there you go. It's now in the combined unit right in front of you. Really pleased with how that works. So unlike the old seven segment displays on the little Max 7219 boards, the cable length for these is actually quite long and it really doesn't seem to affect them. That's because I've added the extra capacitors in the PCBs of the radios. Also, there's quite a few, you saw the electrolytic capacitors added to the output, the five volt output lines on the board as well. This means that board now can definitely be fitted to the glare shield here or at the back of the MIP. I've still undecided where it's gonna go yet, but hopefully we can wire everything up to that. At worst case, we're just gonna need two boards so Mobile Flight has just removed all the limitations of the amount of devices you can use. So actually, I could design a board now with many more multiplexers, but that's for another time. I'm now gonna go away, package these up, and hopefully get these out to the patrons on my channel. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Sim out.